Hey guys, this is Aaron from uh, My Life's House. Um, if you're watching this channel, you're following this channel, you're probably following from before when I was uh, living in my tiny, my uh, camper. Uh, I had uh, I have a whole series of those videos where I uh, bought an old camper, refurbished it, uh, completely gutted it, and then lived in it for a couple of years now. Now I'm uh, in a brick and mortar and uh, I wanted to uh, continue the channel but expand it out to different things that uh, I've done um, outside of just uh, building building that camper and living it. But uh, if you want to see that series, I'll put a link to it uh, probably right up here, um, and then I'll I'll uh, continue these going forward. So today I I've been making sourdough bread for about a year now. I started a, a batch of sourdough about. A year ago, and then I uh, unfortunately let it, let it die. So then I had to start another branch about nine months ago. So I've been working with that now. That is that is this right here. Got a nice nice batch of, of sourdough here. Uh, basically, to keep this alive, you have to feed it just like any other um, organism that you keep around. Uh, uh, you have to feed it. I do a scoop of flour and about a, a half a scoop to a scoop of water and mixed in every day. Uh, and that's just to feed it, to keep it, it's, I mean, it needs to eat to live. So you do that. If you know you're not going to be baking for a week or so, um, I would put it uh, in the fridge. Um, feed it, put it in the fridge, and it'll last for about a week without feeding. If it's going to go longer than a week, pull it out, feed it, let it sit out for a day or so, and then put it back in the fridge. So this has been out a week and I've been feeding it. So I, I generally make sourdough uh, on the weekends and uh, I, I alternate between baguettes and, and I experiment with different types of bread. I do some loaf bread, some rolls. Baguettes are pretty much my favorite to make. So today I'm gonna try to uh, mesh uh, two recipes together um, to make a like a, a, a challah. Uh, sourdough type bread. So I have my sourdough bread that I've modified over the time and then I have a recipe book for challah and it looks like the, some of the difference is uh, uh, the addition of oil and um, and eggs. Um, so I'm going to try that. So basically to start out with this, all this, all the uh, measurements for uh, sourdough and I'll put this recipe up, up on here too. I'll put it up, up, on, uh, up on this video. So you can see uh, my new modified version, but it's all done by weight, except for except for the water. Uh, I modified this recipe, uh, and I start off in two stages. The first stage is a small portion of flour with water and sourdough and uh, a little bit of, of commercial yeast. Um, it's not necessary. Uh, you can get away with just using the sourdough because it is yeast, but it's slow acting. So if you're in a if you're in a hurry and you want to get done in one day. Uh, I, would, I would recommend adding, uh, I think I add a teaspoon of, of commercial yeast in there with it, and that just helps it rise a little bit faster. You still get the sourdough taste, because I'm still adding the sourdough, but you're not getting, um, it, it, it's not taking as long to rise and, and, and to get ready. So, to get that started, I'm going to go ahead and get my scale, and then uh, start weighing stuff out, and I'll be right back with you in a second. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, so the way I do this, I try to keep the dish usage down to a, a minimum. So I have this this nice scale here. Uh, it's digital scale, and it has the ability to uh, go to grams. And that's my recipe is set in grams. So if you want to convert it to uh, whatever, you can do that. I set the empty bowl on here, and I tear it out, and it basically just zeroes it out. It takes the weight of the bowl out of the equation. So my recipe uses. Um, 200 grams of flour. Uh, I know bread flour is the best. It's got higher gluten, and the gluten is what gives you that that uh, that stretchiness of the bread. But um, if you don't have, you, you can be just fine with uh, all purpose. So let me go ahead and put 200 grams of this in here. That's 160, 180, 190. Yeah, a little bit over, but that's okay. 200 grams of flour. Then I'm gonna get some commercial yeast. I buy I buy yeast in, in bulk from um, uh, the box stores like you know Costco or Sam's or whatever, whatever you have in the area. Um, my wife makes fun of me because I call Costco Price Club, which is the old timers know know what that is. So 
a little spoonful of yeast, put it in there. Next, 500 milligrams of warm water. So I've got a measuring cup down here somewhere. Yep. And then you 320 grams of starter, so that'll probably clear me out here. This is, this is I'm not sure how much this is, but it's just, this is probably close. So let me just, let me tear this out again, tear this out. Okay, I want 320 grams. And you see the see the sourdough? It's a little bit thicker. You, know, you can do it however you want to. There's some thicker, okay. and there's some thinner, but this one's thicker. I'm going to go to 320. 260, 270, 280, and 320. Now what I'll do with this now is I'll, I'll take it, I'll let it settle back down, and then I'll put a scoop or two, so it just about cleared me out in there. Uh, I'll put a scoop of flour in there, and then I'll put some water in there, let it sit for a day, and then um, put it in the fridge. Alright, so, so warm water. So, the thing you want to know about yeast and water and temperature, yeast uh, thrives, it blooms, it uh, grows at about 90 to 100, shy less of 110 degrees. I could be off, I'm not uh, a yeast scientist, but that's, you, you don't want to go much over 100 and something degrees or you'll kill off the yeast. So, um, you know, if you feel it and it's warm, then you're probably pretty good, but sometimes I will get it too hot and I'll set a thermometer in there, I'll just let it sit till it comes down. So, I'll go ahead and put this 500 milliliters of water in here. So this is this is not all the flour I'm going to use. 200 milligrams is just basically enough to get me a little a little mush going, um, so the yeast can start growing and uh, it'll make like a foamy uh, mix. So I'll take this and I'll mix it a bit until um, <clears throat> it all comes together or it all mixes up. It's it's not going to come together because it's still too liquidy, but. It's gonna it's gonna mix and together and can, and uh, get all blended and then you're gonna let it set and it's gonna sit there and the yeast is gonna feed off of the sugars that are in there. Now that reminds me, I should probably put some put a little bit of sugar in there for heat. Anyways. So you don't need to do this because there's enough there's, an, there's there's enough technically sugar in the uh, in the flour, but I just put a little sprinkle of sugar in it just to give it something to eat and make it happy. Happy yeast makes good bread. So it's mixing, uh, still a little lumpy. I'm gonna let it go for a couple more minutes, and then I'm gonna let it um, let it bloom. The blooming depends on the temperature of the water, depends on the sugar they can eat, depends on the, the, uh, the freshness of yeast. Uh, there's a lot of things that go into the, 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 the blooming of the, let me get this right, to the blooming of, of the yeast. So um, yeast eats sugar and then it expels CO2. That's where you get your leavening from. So um, there's different kinds of yeast. There's alcohol yeast, which uh, expels CO2, and it expels alcohol. It turns the sugars into alcohol. Uh, but bread yeast basically just excludes um, CO2 from the yeast. So I'll let this mix. I'll let it uh, see it starting to come together like a little, like a, a half and half or a heavy cream type consistency. And then I'll let it bloom, and then I'll come back to you guys. Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks. Uh, thanks for staying with me. Um, I'm back now. It's been about uh, hour and a half, maybe two hours of letting this thing bloom. Let me show you. Let me show you what we got here. Um, turn it down here. So we've got. Uh, it's nice and foamy. I don't know if you can see that. 
it's it's kind of I don't know heavy cream and it's got a nice little foam to it so I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing everything else in anyway so let me turn this on this over here all right so um Now we're going to have to add the rest of the ingredients. And this is where I'm trying to uh, uh, mesh the uh, challah and the regular sourdough bread. Normally with sourdough, I'll add the rest of the flour and the salt and then mix it up and let it go and it'll be done. But I'm going to try to mix in some of the egg product and uh, the oil and the sugar to try to make it kind of a challah bread. Okay, so I put it back on my scale. Put it back on my scale and I've zero uh, and it's got the, the dough already in that I just made and I zeroed it out again. <clears throat> so the next thing I do is I'm gonna add uh, 600 grams of flour. So I'll start my flour again. I'll just go ahead and start adding that in there. <clears throat> you can sift this if you want to. Um, that's totally up to you. It, it will help to keep uh, lumps out of it if you want. I don't, but you know, I have a I have a kitchen aid that I let run for 15, 20 minutes to get this all mixed in here. So, so I got that, and then I'm gonna add, uh, where's the salt? I'm gonna add a little bit of salt, just one, uh, one teaspoon, just for flavor. Also salt um, helps to um, slow down the reaction of the yeast. So you don't want the yeast to, 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 to completely eat up all the sugar right away. You want to kind of mellow it out so it'll you, it'll eat up the sugar slowly. So the salt helps retard it, but it's mostly for flavor. Okay, so here's where we're gonna mix in the, uh, the other ingredients. The recipe calls for three eggs beaten, some sugar, and some vanilla, and some vegetable oil. So let me go ahead and do these three eggs. I'm gonna show them there. Fork. Just go ahead and mix these up really good. It calls for uh, three quarters of a cup of vegetable oil. So I've got a half here, so we'll do a half. And this is um, unfiltered olive oil. You can use whatever oil you have, you know, whatever flavor you, you care for. Three quarters of a cup, and then half a cup of sugar. I don't want to use that because it'll get stuck in there. So in that case, I'll take a quarter cup twice to make half a cup. Also calls for cinnamon, vanilla. Um, I'll use some vanilla in there. I make I make some vanilla, which is really good. So it calls for a tablespoon. Yeah, let's go ahead and mix it up really good. <clears throat> okay. So I've got everything mixed here in this. I'm gonna put this back on here and get it started mixing with the dough hook. And as it goes, I'm just gonna slowly pour in this stuff. A little bit at a time. I'm sorry, and that, that uh, vanilla was uh, a tablespoon. Okay, now I've got it all mixed in there. Set that back there. Over here so we can kind of see what's going on. 
Let's go ahead and let that mix. So it'll start coming together. <clears throat> this is typically the sourdough I make is typically a very wet dough. Um, so what I do is I'll I'll let it mix like this on on one until it's you know it, all the flour is kind of incorporated in, and then I'll turn it up to two. And then this becomes the um, the kneading the kneading time. So you're supposed to knead it until it's come together and stretchy and blah blah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this thing here go <clears throat> typically for 15 minutes and I'll keep an eye on it and I'll see if it's coming together, if it's getting too thick, uh, but other than that I'll just let this thing do all the work. Instead of me having to knead it, I'll let this thing do all the work and mix everything together and knead it. And it's still going to be a soft dough. It's going to be a very runny dough, but once you let it set and once you let it bloom and the flour soaks up all liquids, it um, it comes together real well and it makes a really nice moist bread and it makes it um, in my opinion a, a small a small bubble uh, type bread so let me go ahead and let this go for a while I'll leave it on for a bit and just kind of let you guys watch it I'll probably just uh, speed through this and then uh, I'll come back whenever it's done with this I'll let it rise and then I'll, I'll come back and show you guys what we got Hey guys, I'm back. Um, so it, it's mixing. It's been mixing for about 15, almost almost 20 minutes, um, and uh, I had to make some alterations while you guys are gone. And so I had to add another uh, 150. Was it? Where's my recipe card? Uh, another 200 grams of flour. Um, as with any new recipe, when you're mashing two recipes together, you gotta make some adjustments. Um, normally, I put in. Uh, I put in 500 uh, milliliters of water um, and the starter, which is liquidy, but the three eggs and uh, the vanilla is, uh, added a lot more liquid to it. So I added two more, 200 more grams of flour and mixed it some more. And um, I have a, a entry level basic uh, tilt head uh, KitchenAid. And I noticed that when I make full recipes of the sourdough, um, the dough seems to creep up the hook and it gets, starts getting around that, uh, starts getting around this, this top piece. So the dough will creep up and then it'll start coming over here and it'll start getting on the top here. Um, to counteract that, I'll turn the kitchen up to a three and that spins it a little bit faster and it helps keep that stuff off of here. But with the extra 200 grams of, of flour and the three eggs and all the other stuff in there, it's it creeped over here and then look at this my uh the bottom of my kitchen aid is just covered in uh in in, in uh, dough so it, it creeped up over so um i mean recently i've been making half batches just to kind of keep that dough down in the control but you know live and learn it's it's not it's not terrible it just means i gotta clean it up so um, i've got the dough mixed it's been uh and like I said, 20 minutes. Um, turn this down here. So here's the here's the dough. It's right here. So it's 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 kind of sticky. It's kind of it's kind of pulling. Right? See? You guys see the yellow? I don't know if you can see it on the screen here. The yellow from the eggs. Um, but it this is this is the kind of dough I like to make. I make it like to make a nice soft one where you can squish it. You can stretch it. See how you can almost see through 
see through here when you stretch it before it tears. Um, that's a that's a good that's a good dose. The gluten's been worked up pretty good. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flour my surface and turn this out, and I'm gonna turn it over a couple times, and then I'm gonna leave it right here on the counter to to rise um, to rise for the first time. So get some flour out here. that Let's see if we can get you a better shot there okay so all right I like using these bench scrapers they're really great I got a pack of them with like like four of them in it from Amazon so that's great so then we'll take this and we'll just use this to scoop this dough out all around the side until it finally comes out. And it's nice and warm too. Okay, there we go. So we got the dough out. Okay, so basically you get your dough here. It's nice and soft. You just want to slowly turn it over. You want it soft to get flour on it, all sides of it. And then get it slowly. Just knead it with your hands a little bit. There you go. See? And see, it's a nice soft dough. It's not a heavy dough. So you want to turn it. There. Now it's starting to come together. So I keep turning it. Think about that, uh, that guy or that girl at work who's uh, driving me crazy. Just push on it really good. If you start sticking to your palms there like that, just put your hands in the flour and just, just keep turning it over. I turn it quarter way, push, push, push. Okay, so it feels like it's coming together. So you turn it over and I just turn the, turn the bottom under like a mushroom to get a nice little round piece like this. Okay, you're gonna leave this here. You're gonna take a a clean clean napkin. You lay over it. That's it. You're gonna leave it here and let it rise. It's gonna probably double in size and rise up. <clears throat> and then we're gonna come back. We're gonna punch it down. I know it seems counterintuitive, but you're gonna punch it back down. And then we're gonna lay it. We're gonna put it into the hollow braid. We're gonna let it rise again. Um, and then we'll put it in the oven and cook it. So we'll leave this here. So it gets nice little. So when you push on it, it comes back. It doesn't. Your finger doesn't stay in. It comes back. That means it's nice and nice and firm, and it's and it's starting to rise some. So we're gonna leave this here, and I'll come back with you guys in a second. Hey guys, it's Aaron. I'm back. Um, it's been about ooh, three hours of letting this thing rise on the counter. So um, I'm going to go ahead, I think it's ready to go ahead and separate it up and proof. So let me give you, let me show you what uh, what's going on. Uh, okay, so there, there's the dough now. Okay, so we'll move around, turn it over a couple times just to get everything worked up a little bit. <clears throat> All right, so see, it's still a nice little soft dough. So we, we like that. So, okay, since so this is going to be a hala, we're going to divide this up into three pieces. So let's go ahead and do this. There's one. Two and there's three. Let me get a little, little bit, a little bit to that one. Okay, so we got three simple pieces. All right, so let me get this 
rolled out. See, I'm just stretching it out. You can try to roll it. Sometimes if it's got too much flour, it won't, it won't roll real well. So you can just stretch it out, squeeze it, get a nice little length on it. There's the second piece of that braid. So you just do a braid on it. I got the two pieces here. I got the piece here. <clears throat> just start the braid. Very simple. Braid it over. Line it up a little bit. There we go. There. Right over. Just braid it like you normally would. Anything else? Took the, we took a dough, we put it in three pieces, and then we just did a quick braid on it. I'm going to let this sit here and let this rise a bit. And then uh, <clears throat> once it's rised, then we wouldn't put any oven at uh, probably 425 degrees and let it, and let it uh, finish cooking. We've got to let it rise more and get some space on it. So I'll come back to you when this rises up and it's ready to go back in the oven, and uh, I'll let you show, uh, show you what it looks like. All right, thanks.